Um, and for years, you know what I've done? I've checked Asian, Pacific Islander, and other. <laughs> all at the same time. Because it's all me. <laughs> I'm all, and, and um, you know, it's designed to confuse them and to that's how I've dealt with it. I mean, I have, either I leave it blank or I, I, I check those boxes. And I don't know how you guys feel about it. My what do mother, you check? My mother used to write in human. Human? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, That's good. Human rights. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, um, really, uh, the, the, the term Asian, um, it's a ridiculous term. Because it, it, what does it cover? It covers everything from east of Europe all the way to the Pacific. That's a lot of, a lot of different kinds of people. Infinite, really. I mean, in China, China alone has how many ethnicities in China? I, 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 I forget, something like um, I don't know, hundreds of ethnicities. And northern Chinese are very different from, from southern Chinese. What is black to me? African? Are you kidding? Africa has so much diversity in its population. What does African actually look like? We have an idea because most African Americans who live in the United States descend from West Africa. And there is a particular West African look. But if you go to Eastern Africa, you go to Southern and Central Africa, people there look very different. They are very different. I think there are something like 16 or 17 different, very radically different body types so these terms, black, white, oh my god, what does that mean? <laughs> white. <laughs> what does white mean? Um, these terms are outdated. They're outdated, and yet they're still on government. Every government form you fill out still has them. Why? I didn't know. Um, I spent some time talking about that in the last chat. There is, There are some um, uh, practical uses for racial categories. Forensic anthropologists have a way of determining how do you identify bodies. Well, they have these particular markers that they look for. And they, 90% of the time, can identify, so quote unquote, the race of a corpse or a skeleton through particular markers. So it comes in handy and raced in raced in anthropology, forensic anthropology. You know, most anthropologists will say that the whole notion of race is a term from the 1900s. There are um, researchers in, in immunology um, who have determined that certain diseases uh, are more apt to um, attack certain groups of people that can generally be categorized as races. And in order to find cures for these, in order to do research for them, they have to classify races. So, and there, there are more examples of that. There are uses for the term um, and somehow, I think, we need to, we as a society, need to figure out a way to be able to, to use race when it's helpful. It's helpful for the body. It's helpful for the rest of us. But it's helpful for the collective to be able to acknowledge them. But what do geneticists find? Geneticists find, geneticists find that we, all of us, are remarkably, remarkably 90. 9.999% similar genetically. We have so much more common and common. Um, the differences are minuscule. Minuscule. But it turns out even that small difference, even that small difference turns out to be revealing. So the way to understand race for me is this paradoxical way. You have, you have to be able to accept the paradox and the contradiction. But I still do Asian, Pacific Islander, and other. <laughs> Mostly I think of myself as a 